Hi everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to create a perspective grid in Photoshop and why it's going to be useful for creating concept art and visuals. So to get started here I've just got a very plain uh, Photoshop document, it's just an A4 page that I've opened up and I'm going to start creating a perspective grid right off the bat. So that's basically a lot of lines converging on a vanishing point. To do that I'm going to go over to the left hand side and go over to my shape tool. Now by default it will be set to the rectangle. If I click on that I'm then going to go down to the fourth option where it says polygon tool. Now as soon as I start drawing I get just a very simple shape blocked in and it's hard to see how this is going to be helpful for creating perspective. So if I delete that what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the top of our screen where the settings are for the polygon tool. And I'm going to work from left to right. So first thing, I'm going to turn off fill because I just want lines, don't want any big blocky shapes. And because I want those lines, I'm going to change the stroke to black. I'm going to keep it at one point. I want the lines to be pretty thin. If you want really bold perspective lines, then you can increase this. And then jumping over to the right, we've got a little gear icon here. And if I click on that, we get this little drop down menu. And here I'm going to change uh, this setting here where it says star. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to indent the sides by 99%. Then the very last thing I'm going to do is the number of sides is 5. I'm going to change it to 100. This is basically meaning 100 lines of perspective. And with all those settings changed, now watch what happens when I draw. We get this brilliant star shape which if we especially if we hold down shift gives us both lines of perspective and our horizon line you can see this central horizontal line there now to move this around i'm going to go to my uh, selection tool my path selection tool here and you can see that i can start moving that around so i can position it in my concept art it's on its own layer and I can just hit Control J on my keyboard or Command J if you're on a Mac to then duplicate it and move that across the page. Now, how would we use this? So we've got our two vanishing points. You may have three, you may have just one, depending on what type of perspective you're using. But let's say I had uh, just a panel, a wall or a doorway, something like that. And I want to transform this to the perspective. Now what I like to do at this point is just reduce the opacity ever so slightly so you can see the grid you're working on. So now that we can see the grid lines, what I'm going to do is going to go down to Edit, Transform, and I'm going to go to Distort. And what I can do is sort of start moving these corners so that they match up to my perspective lines. If I hold down shift, I'll be able to lock it to an axis. So no, no matter where I move my cursor now, it's just going up and down. It's going to move that one there. I need to move this one slightly up. And let's make this one converge to this line here. So here we can see that this panel here is converging onto this vanishing point. Now what happens if I want to duplicate this? If I copy that, I go to Control T to transform it. I can scale it. But what you'll find is that in this case, I've got very regular perspective going on here. I haven't got a very complicated shape, so it's not difficult to make this match. But what happens if you have an irregular shape and you want to kind of have it repeating off into the distance there? The best thing to do is to go Control T, which is the shortcut for transform. You see this little icon in the centre here. I'm going to move that to the vanishing point there. And watch what happens when I now scale it. It moves to the vanishing point, so I can scale it along that perspective line. So a really, really useful combination of the transform tools and the perspective grid. Now currently this perspective grid is quite dynamic. If I zoom out, what I can do is use the crop tool on the left hand side 
and just drag out the painting, increase the size of it. And then I can go back to my perspective grid. If I click the uh, polygon one there, and I can move it across. And you can see that my perspective becomes much less dynamic, it becomes slightly more realistic. Now, your painting may not be that big, so you can always crop it back. And you'll still have the perspective coming through on the hand side there. And you can see that it's quite faint, it fades out too far there here, so I can just scale that back up. But that's how we set up a really simple perspective grid in Photoshop and a quick little intro into how we might use that in our project work.